Right, good morning and thank you for joining the Average Golf Round down here at 4 Golf Chester and it is all about team average. Yes, five golfers, five different handicaps, five different ages, different swing speeds and ultimately five different opinions. We're going to be testing the tailor-made M6 driver. No tech spec, no introduction anymore from me. It is all about the testing, it's all about performance, it's all about opinion. I'm going to shut up and we're going to start hitting some golf balls. Okay, well, straight off for me, it appears better. It's better in a matte finish than a glossy finish. And for me, looking at a club, that's part of feeling right with the swing. So if it looks good in my head, I'm gonna start swinging okay. to how I like it. So I've never been known for the driving. I've always, I can hit an iron quite long, so I've, I've managed to get around the course well with that. But the M4 was the best driver I've had previous and I thought he hit it well but the minute I started it in this it felt better it felt second third shot I was confident that the swing was gonna take the ball where I wanted a better shot it sounded fuller uh, it sounded like a dull like I was hitting through the ball where the M4 it's like a ping it's like a, a loud bang noise so yeah it's uh, for me the performance of this was definitely better. I mean, it's average, isn't it, now for a driver? If I was in the market for one right now, I would definitely swap. I would definitely change this to the M4. Well, I'm going to buy it, aren't I? <laughs> them, uh, it always helps when you look at figures because you can hit the ball and, and it looks good out there. But if you haven't got a comparison as to where it's going, um, it, it's hard to tell. But on the numbers, you know, they were all there for me, better. Okay, so that was the opinion of Steve Holmes, new to the channel, uh, 17 handicapper and great to hear the thoughts and opinions of Steve there. Right, next it is on to Mr Andy Roper, you've seen Andy last week, he was a big fan of the Cobra F9. What does he think of this driver from TaylorMade? I like the, uh, the looks of it, the carbon finish underneath, it's nice isn't it, the colourings, uh, I like that, it's good on the eye, from above, I really like it, I like the matte finish with the carbon sort of underlay on it, and I, I much prefer it with the thinner sort of silver line across the front, I wasn't a big fan of that big white step on the previous yeah. sort of designs of it, uh, I'm not a massive tailor made sort of driver wood fan, ordinarily, um, but I do prefer the look of that to the last couple of models they've done. It feels really good. Uh, to me, I've always got a recollection whenever I've tried TaylorMade that it's quite a, a loud, aggressive face and it, it fires off it, you know, and they're all about distance and, you know. Whereas this one, although you do still get the distance out of it, it's a lot more solid sounding. Uh, you get a lot more feel across the club face. Uh, the feedback's great. Um, I really like it. Yeah, th this common phrase at the minute, isn't it, is it seems to be what every manufacturer's charging, which to me doesn't make it right. I think. 399 is more acceptable, but I'd want to see it closer to 350 uh, personally. Uh, it, and it is just a personal thing. I've got a big beard and bonnet about the price of clubs at the moment, so uh, I wouldn't buy it on the basis that it's above an amount I deem to be acceptable. And until they brought it down, I'd probably only pick this up second hand. Yeah, I think anything at the moment really is, is better than my driver. It's the 915, so we're talking four years old tech wise. It wasn't a particularly great driver at the time, but it was something that I had good numbers with and enjoyed it and it's been successful for me um, but you're starting to notice the, the the increase in technology that's about nowadays with the drivers I'd, I'd definitely change it to this um, given the option but not at the price for the reasons I've mentioned um, I think the 
The one thing I would say with the M6 that I felt is that the dispersion felt tighter. I felt more confident as I could step on it, particularly to put a bit more distance in there without worrying that it's going to necessarily leak out to the right, which can be my bad shot. Um, so I did feel a lot more confident with it when I was sort of stepping on it a bit, um, which would be great, obviously, in certain conditions. It, it, it's a club, I think, that would probably change my mind with TaylorMade in terms of the woods and drivers. I've got the irons, but I've never really been a fan of the drivers for the, the reasons that I've mentioned aesthetically, the price point and the noise, uh, the sound out of it, whereas this one seems to be a little bit more what I'd go for personally in a driver. So some impressive numbers from Andy and I think pretty keen on this M6. So, so far so good, they're liking this driver from TaylorMade. So next up, it is time to go to Walter Winstanley. Uh, Walter, playoff 10 was it or 11? I can't remember now. His uh, details will come up on the screen. Uh, so let's see how Walter thinks of this M6 driver. I think this TaylorMade driver looks extremely nice. I noticed they've gone from the white to the grey, a rather thinner strip. Nice carbon matte finish on the top. No complications at the bottom, no sliding weights or anything like that. I think it's a, one of the best looking TaylorMade drivers they've actually produced because I think the white can fade and get dirty. This is unlikely to do this. This will age very well, so I think that's something that's important to take into account when you've got a club like this, especially one that's fairly expensive anyway. Well, from my point of view, the feel was harsh. I thought it was very evident where you hit the ball in the face, although I didn't bring my best swing today, I have to say. I hit it when I hit it in the middle, it was absolutely fine, but the variation between strikes worried me a little bit. Uh, I've tried other clubs which are much more forgiving, and as we're moving into an era now where MOI is key, I didn't feel it on this club. My own view is someone with a faster swing speed, and I'm a senior golfer after all, would probably derive more benefit because A, they're getting, hitting it harder and also they're hitting it more consistently. So from my perspective as a senior golfer, I was disappointed with the feel completely. The price of this club's 399 and quite close to the, the other ones like Cobra, Strixon at 349 and probably Ping. So it's not much more, but it is a slightly premium price and I have to say, from my experience of using it, albeit just once this morning, I wouldn't want to pay more than the 349 for the driver. I didn't think to me it would have been worth it, certainly in the hands of a more skilled player. Yes, they would probably love this and they hit it miles, but for me it would be too much money because I simply wouldn't get the value out of it. Performance wise, I didn't do very well with this driver, certainly as well as I'd hoped to have done. I think launch and spin were down, although ball speed was surprisingly up. I felt I had to work very hard. I was feeling I had to hit the ball extremely hard, which is not good, at possibly losing rhythm and probably losing a little bit of accuracy with it as well. So really, again, feel, you know, feel wasn't great, and I think the performance for me was disappointing, but there, as I say, in the hands of a more skilled player, I think this would go well, but to me, I didn't, I didn't get that performance and my figures were disappointing well down and I think that's just because of the club and the way I was with it. So slightly different opinion there, nice to see that thrown in from Walter, love the different perspectives and the different opinions and it just goes to show how literally it does vary from golfer to golfer and why you must try these drivers out for yourself. But next up, Brian Treadwell, uh, 10.6, 11 handicap golfer, very very steady Brian, performs very well with his Callaway Rogue. Let's see, he had a little sneaky go with this before he left uh, last time round on the testing and I'll be interested to see how he performs under pressure when the camera goes on and uh, only one way to find out, let's get over to Brian, get him in some golf balls and then get his opinion. The look it's address, uh, very nice, pleasing on the eye. Um, it has a what I thought was an offset centre on the face of the club, um, which seems to be much more closer to the heel than ordin ordinarily. And I, although it feels that way, it, it, it feels very natural, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. It gave me a lot of confidence um, when I was about to strike the ball. In terms of feel, um, it might have been the way it was set up from the grip through the shaft down to the club. Um, again, it just engendered a lot of confidence right from the start. 
um, and I, I liked it throughout the, the swing, it felt very balanced. Um, sound, uh, unremarkable um, in the sense it, it didn't put me off anything. The, the Rogue has a very distinctive sound which um, is a bit marmite, you either like it or, or you don't. Um, I don't mind it, it's much more about where the ball ends up than how it sounds at the point of impact which is I've past the point I can do anything about yeah. it at that stage. Um, but yeah, I, again, I, I, I liked it. There's nothing off-putting about the sound of this club at all. If they brought it down to the price of the Cobra, they're much more likely to have people coming in much more often to swap it. Um, that being said, if you go to the right place and you trade in your old clubs, there are always deals to be done. So I'm coming to speak to James, <laughs> perhaps if I'm taking this any further and seeing what he thinks about prices. Felt very comparable to the Rogue when I was striking the ball well um, and maybe even not so well. Um, about this as a club, I desperately wanted to buy the M3 when I bought the Rogue, um, but I couldn't hit the M3. Um, my swing is now better than it was 12 months or so ago. Um, and now the twist face technology doesn't punish me as much as it did a year ago. Um, in terms of the data, I will be very interested to see the difference between this and the Rogue, and if there is a real benefit to the swap, then as I say, I, I may well look at that. Interestingly, when I played, when I tried it out, I didn't have the D-type, and because I have a, a fade or a slice as my worst case scenario, the D-type might help fixing that, and that might be another reason to think about the swap, because I know my Rogue is the draw bias, so that would help me. Um, well, I said I would Brian perform under the pressure of the camera. Well, no problem at all. He performed really, really well. And at the moment, there's a very positive vibe for this uh, golf club indeed. At least that's what I'm reading uh, from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing uh, from the lads that have currently tested the clubs. Last but not least, it's on to our PGA professional, good friend of mine, Lewis Johnson. He's using the TaylorMade M3 currently. So this will be an interesting one for him on a personal level. Let's see how he gets on with this M6. Um, yeah, like the look um, at a dress. Um, it's one thing that really uh, I liked it from M M1, M2 to M3 is the sleeker line on the top um, at a dress, and they've gone uh, a little bit more with that, so it's a slimmer line again with M5, M6. Um, so, a uh, really attractive club at a dress. Loved it. Um, sounded very used to tailor made clubs, so um, I really liked the, how it came off the, the club, how it sounded. Um, feel of it um, actually sort of bottomed a few um, and, and still felt like it come off okay which is a big plus because it doesn't always come out of the middle of the club so that was a big positive yeah really good uh, I like it I think 399 is probably uh, across the board with, with the level of adjustability um, that it's got uh, and I think the performance of it I think it sits probably across the board where it should um, it's not got the, the ultra adjustability as some um, but it's got just enough there where you can tweak it um, so I think it sits right um, whether that's still a little bit too expensive I think it, it, it's a sort of uh, a, a general feeling in golf at the minute but no I think it sits where it should for the, for the level it gives um, I think um, exactly the same shaft um, which is a big thing uh, very absolutely identical um, and I was lucky enough to get fitted uh, at a Taylor Made Performance Institute with my old driver Exactly the same uh, loft, shaft, everything combo, uh, and numbers pretty much identical, um, which is uh, sort of a testament to getting properly fitted. Uh, didn't really give me anything extra, which is a, it is a shame because it claims to be faster, um, but certainly on the miss hits, didn't really notice a, a drop in performance. So maybe that's where the benefit would uh, would be to change, but uh, numbers very much similar. So. Right, okay, so it's summary time from my perspective and uh, I've done my review of the M6 driver and to be fair, I pretty much give it a, a, a good thumbs up. It was a very impressive driver for me personally, but it's always better to hear the opinions of five other golfers. And I think that's been the main success of this video so far, this style of video, is seeing the opinions of others. And it, it, there are variables, there's no doubt about it. And things again in this, for me, listening in the background, there was far more positive noises coming from everybody who used the M6, I think. I think everybody was pretty impressed, it was fair to say. 
Walter was the only prob uh, person that was perhaps a little bit disappointed, but I don't think, to be fair, watching Walter swing from on this video compared to his performance on the first video, I think he won't mind me saying he wasn't at his best in terms of his own performance. So I think overall, I got some very positive noises, and I think in, in certain cases, there were some real gains made, certainly in the case of Steve Holmes and, and, uh, and Andy Roper as well. I think noticing again the, the shaft head combination, and I have pointed out in this video, everybody is fit for a shaft that is suitable to, for them. And, and in the case of Lewis, it was an identical shaft at the very end. Um, I think again, it shows that when you get to the scratch golf, or we get to the PGA professional, Lewis hits very consistent swing. His numbers, I've just edited this video, and his numbers were almost identical with his M3 driver as they were in the previous testing two weeks ago, because everybody is hit again. Everybody, by the way, that's the other thing, everybody re-recorded new numbers, so it was based on the swing they had that day, uh, air temperature, all the different things that might come in and make a difference. So rather than use numbers that we've already pre-recorded, everybody hit golf balls again. And like I said, in Lewis's case, almost identical with his uh, M3 numbers. Uh, he performed far better with this than he did with the uh, the Cobra F9. Once again, a lot more suitable to him. And I think, but I do think the shaft is a key element of getting this head shaft combination right. Uh, but overall, like I said, yeah, take what you will from it. It's it's at the end of the day, it's your interpretation. Those comments, you're seeing the differences. I think the key message is yet again, it's about going out, trying these drivers out, these products out for yourself and more importantly, getting custom fit and making sure you get the right head shaft combination that suits you. Because in my opinion, it is literally different for every single golfer, or quite possibly different. And that's what we're seeing with these videos. So like with the first one, um, you were so positive with the comments. I was really pleased and thank you for that. And it gives you the encouragement to carry on with this style of video, hence why we've done this one. The plan is, is to do this every two weeks. So one video of this style every two weeks. So that's what we've penciled in next time around. Two weeks from today, we'll be looking at the G4 10 irons, I think is the plan. So as ever, comments down below, give us your opinion, thumbs up if you like the video and uh, all those other things that uh, I'm supposed to ask you to do. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon.